Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francis and today I am bringing you the review of James Patterson's TikTok. Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francis and I am so, so happy to be with you guys here today. I wanted to start by talking about the cover. This cover in this book in general is a little beat up, but this was saved from an airplane. Someone else had treated it this bad. I, I swear it wasn't me. I swear I didn't treat it this bad. You can see it's all wrinkled and stuff like that, but I still love it. So, starting on about this book, I want to talk about a, a little bit about James Patterson's publishing style and the book style itself. One thing that I don't really like about James Patterson anymore is how commercial his books have gotten. You know, all the covers are really commercial. The writing itself and the and the inside of the book is really really commercial and that's something I don't really like a lot. There's a lot of marketing in here, uh, <laughs> so I don't really like it that much anymore because of that. Now, getting into James Patterson's writing in general, he is a fast-paced writer and he writes mostly detective books. He has at least two big detective series that I know about. One of them is Michael Bennett. The other one is Alex Cross. Getting right into it, if you don't like spoilers, you can you can. Go ahead and run to the other part of the video, the one that doesn't have spoilers anymore, but I'm going to start into the spoilers right now, so go away if you don't want that. This book is about Michael Bennett, and James Patterson writes it on three fronts. One of them, there's three, three storylines, one main storyline, and two secondary storylines. And basically what he does, more or less, if we want to you know, get the lines in their place, is there is one main story going throughout the whole book and then once one of the secondary storylines happens from the beginning to the middle of the book and then the other one from the middle to the end of the book. So we start right off the bat with Michael Bennett being on vacation with his family and you understand right away that he's a family guy. He has 10 kids, all of them adopted. His wife has passed away. Uh, it's not really clear why, but I'm sure it is clear why in the first books of this series. This is actually a good thing about this series, is you can read each book separately. His backstory is brought throughout the, the series, but the main story for each book are like really individual. You don't really need to read the first book to understand the second one. He is on vacation with his family and the first secondary storyline kicks in right away. You start by having these problems with his between his family and another family called the Flaherty's or Flaherty's or whatever whatever the name is whatever the hell and so basically his kids are being bullied by this other family's kids so Michael wants to put a stop to that and throughout the book to the middle of the book stuff keeps happening like his kids being bullied around being beaten abused almost killed at some point and this is when Michael draws a line now between the in the first part of the book he's always running between the main storyline in New York City and the secondary storyline this first secondary storyline at this breezy point or whatever it's called in Queens and so he keeps going back and forth from that and at some point he decides to go and solve this problem one, once and for all with the help of his grandfather, Seamus. His grandfather and the nanny are also included in the family. The nanny is a 20-something young woman called Mary Catherine. And so they go up to this Flyer T's guy's uh, house and they decide to threaten them. So this secondary storyline is actually solved. Great, moving on. Then you have the main storyline, which happens from the beginning to the end of the book. And it's basically Michael Bennett trying to catch this bad guy called Carl Apt. It's basically a guy that is copycatting murders and serial killers from the past 100 years in New York City. So he's committing crimes. They committed exactly in the same place with exactly the same way of killing the victims. It starts out by a bomb menace. Then it's actually a real bombing. Then a smaller bombing. Uh, then he kills two people in a car with a heavy caliber gun. Then he moves on to kidnapping and stabbing a teenage girl and then he moves on to actually kidnapping a, a little girl that he wasn't supposed to kill but ends up dying by accident and so they keep chasing on this guy and it's actually hard and that's actually an interesting part in the book because it's hard to chase a guy who is just copycatting other killers he, there isn't anything you have to go on himself there is actually just one thing that he leaves as a clue on the first crime scene the first bombing which is for Lawrence or something like that. It's the only clue that he leaves that is connected to himself. So they keep chasing after this and at some point they figure out that two of the, the kidnappings and, and killings of the girls, the teenage girl and the little girl, are connected because their mothers used to be in the same class at the same university. So they interview these two mothers 
and they come to realizing that one of their teachers that they actually got fired was called Lawrence, Lawrence Bergman. So they go up to this Lawrence guy's uh, house and it's really simple because the guy is like on the verge of dying. He is, he has heart disease, he's very very fat and he's the disgrace of his rich and famous family. And so they go up there and he confesses immediately to knowing all about these crimes because it's not himself who is committing these crimes but it's his friend who is committing them for him to see and for him to be happy. And he is sent to jail where he later kills himself with a cyanide pill. And so they start chasing this Carl Apt guy and the story moves on and on and on until it gets to a place where this Carl guy is actually chasing after Michael Bennett. So he goes into Michael's uh, vacation house trying to kill Michael and actually ends up finding one of his kids. He clocks the kid, he knocks the kid out and kidnaps the kid to the closest beach and he calls Michael later on telling him to meet him in, at the beach in three minutes or the kid will be dead. So Michael goes along and he's running there and when he gets there he gets into a fight with this Carl guy. Uh, he is stabbed and almost killed but the, the main part about this at, is that this neighborhood where he is spending his vacation is actually a cop vacation neighborhood. So all the cops go there to have their vacation and when he storms out of the house to go to this place the nanny is kind of uncomfortable and she she goes after him to see what is happening and she sees him fighting with this guy so she calls out all the cops in the neighborhood and they come up and shoot this Carl guy dead and yeah that's how it ends. Michael Bennett almost dies, Carl is killed and yeah that's it. Now for the secondary storyline, the second secondary storyline is actually his romantic life. So when they're trying to solve this crime, another agent called Emily Parker is brought in and he's actually has a past with this Emily Parker. He's the one who calls her in because he wants her help, but also because he is kind of, he has, a, he kind of has a thing with her. So he has to choose between Mary Catherine and Emily Parker. But this is actually a very weak secondary storyline because of one simple thing, which is actually not a bad thing. James Patterson is actually good at building characters and their personalities and, and showing you exactly who they are, even if they don't really know that yet. And so you understand immediately that Michael Bennett is a family guy. So when, he, when it comes to choosing between a woman that is already inserted in the family and a woman that is coming from the outside, it's very obvious who is going to choose, no matter how James Patterson tries to deceive you. So that's it, he ends up choosing Mary Catherine, Emily ends up going away, and the story ends when he is at the hospital. That's it. I wanted to do a fast-paced review on this book because this is a fast-paced book, so I thought it would be appropriate. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it wasn't too fast and too blurry for you guys. And if you did enjoy that, leave a like down there. If you want, leave a comment with some suggestions, and this is not up for debate. Subscribe! hit that subscribe button. I do recommend this book for a fast reading, although I give it 3 out of 5 stars because of this. If you read one James Patterson book, you have read every one of them, so there's no not much point in going for the other ones. So it's a 3 out of 5, but not because of the storyline, just because of this too commercial kind of thing that I talk about. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you so much for coming around, for being around here with me for these 10 minutes or something, and I will see you at the next video. Bye.